Hey folks, Lars here. Now, since the end of last year, I've looked at five high-end routers. Today, it's time for number six. It's the TP-Link Archer C3200, and it should be the fastest one yet. We'll start this review by doing the physical overview and the specs. We'll then move on to setup and the GUI, finish off with some numbers and a conclusion. Let's see if the C3200 can live up to my expectations. <laughs> Like with any Wi-Fi review, I'll start with explaining the numbers. If you expect to get 3200 megabits a second out of this, you'll be pretty disappointed. That insane 3200 is just the sum of all three bands. You get the usual 600 megabits a second 2.4 gigahertz bands and dual 1300 megabits a second 5 gigahertz bands. This makes this router perfect for using many different devices at once, but in theory, it should not make it faster than an average AC1900 router. I really like the styling of this top of the line Archer. The top and bottom are covered in a matte black triangular mesh. There are six antennas, which sadly you can't replace, but they help make it look better. When they're down, there's an X so people know you're extremely serious about your Wi-Fi, and when you put them up, it's even more badass. There's a dual-core 1 GHz CPU inside with three coprocessors, one for each band. Now, while this router lacks multi-user MIMO support, it does feature Smart Connect, a technology which automatically assigns the correct band and channel to a client device for optimal performance with all connected devices. On the front are LEDs for power, each band, WAN, LAN, WPS and both USB ports. I'd like to see a light for each LAN port, but many manufacturers are no longer doing this for some reason. There are also buttons to turn Wi-Fi, WPS and the LEDs on or off. On the rear is a reset button, gigabit WAN and 4 gigabit LAN ports. Get USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 ports and a power button to power it up or down. That one's next to the power jack. The brick it comes with is huge, just like with the AC2600, which had dual USB 3.0. It's a bit weird to find cost cutting like this on a flagship device. On the bottom are four rubber feet and two hooks for ceiling or wall mounting. I was quite surprised by the size of the C3200, it's only 20 by 20 centimeters, a lot smaller than I thought. The user experience and GUI are what lets this router down in my opinion. While Netgear, Asus and Synology have these enormous feature sets and settings menus to get lost in for days, TP-Link seems to go for a very simple approach and sadly it's overly simplified to a point where it somewhat limits what the user can do despite the hardware being more than capable. Now, don't get me wrong, this device is more than configurable enough for most users, but for example, I always do my Wi-Fi testing in AP mode, which is not possible with the C3200. There is no bridge mode, there's no repeater mode. I was even unable to put it in AP mode for my testing after disabling DHCP, something I could do on the C2600. Another issue is the lack of firmware updates on the device itself. You still have to download them on a USB drive like in the 90s. Now, this was a feature TP-Link promised back when I reviewed the C2600 last year, but it's still missing on both devices. Now, don't get me wrong, all the features you need and have to change are there in a very nice layout that's very easy to navigate, but in terms of software, Asus and Synology are way, way ahead. I talked to TP-Link about this and in response they showed me a nice PowerPoint slide which promises firmware updates and AP mode and a download service by the end of Q2 2016. Performance however is where this thing shines. At 1 meter range the results were comparable to a wired gigabit connection and in all tests it was faster than any other router I've ever tested except for the ASUS RT-AC87U in large uploads, which is really really impressive. The living room test got absolutely destroyed by the Archer, it clean swept all of the competition. Now moving to a more realistic range, again it's the fastest in nearly all tests. And it wasn't just the data transfer speeds which impressed me, but also the consistency with almost perfectly repeatable results each time. Moving outdoors we're now 15 meters away from the router with multiple walls in between and our results are still good. It's no longer a dominant win, but it's still very good results that we're getting. Of course, I like to push things a little bit, so here are the extreme range tests from 40 meters away in a shed in the garden. At this range there are too many variables like humidity or wind, or someone walking through the signal to call it accurate data, but the C3200 still holds up very well. So guys, the TP-Link Archer C3200 is overall the fastest router that I've ever tested. Now, it comes in at 230 euros and some Belgian and Dutch e-tailers even throw in a free Chromecast for that price point. That means that this is definitely 
a router to consider, if not a no-brainer, because it looks good and it performs even better in and around the house. So guys, if you like this video, feel free to give it a like. Feel free to subscribe or click any of the links in the description below to follow the channel even more. There's a Facebook page, there's a Twitter page, there's Patreon, there's a paypal.me link so you can support the channel. For now though, thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers.